Okay, hello everybody. My name is Jesse Blanchard. I'm one of the librarians at the Rockland Public Library. Um, tonight we have a bunch of people joining us from around the middle of the state. Uh, they are called the Central Maine Ghost Hunters. Um, before we let them get started, which I'm super excited about, by the way, uh, we're going to tell you about some of the other virtual meet, virtual presentations that are going to be coming up. So we were doing, uh, for the remainder of the year, I think, we're going to be doing our virtual programs all virtually. Uh, so all of our Thursday evening at 6.30 programs will take place via Zoom. Uh, so I'll just say for the one time, um, if you're interested in participating <clears throat> In any of our presentations, you must email Patty, our deputy director. Her email address is pking, that's P-K-I-N-G, at rocklandmaine.gov. It's R-O-C-K-L-A-N-D-M-A-I-N-E dot G-O-V. Um, you must request the link to the Zoom by 4 p.m. of the day of the event. Um, we do post the links on Facebook, but not until very late in the evening, just about right before we start. Uh, so if you're interested in any of these, just email her and she'll send you the link. Uh, the first thing, next thing coming up on November 5th at 6.30 is one of the Camden Conference talks. The Camden Conference this year is, um, the theme is geopolitics of the Arctic, a region in peril. So uh, the presenter is going to be a local photographer named Jim Nicholson. Um, and he's going to be talking about his artist residency in Iceland and using art to help combat local climate change. Um, that's going to be November 5th. Then November 12th is going to be something I think is also super cool. Um, uh, where'd she go? It's going to be called uh, Fact, Fiction, and Fandom, the Virtual Reality of Late Medieval Rhymes of Robin Hood. Uh, Sarah Harlan Howie is a professor of English at the University of Maine, and she's going to be doing a talk on... Um, the introduce the audience to the lively tradition of late medieval rhymes of Robin Hood and other outlaws, and then explore ways in which the virtual world of outlaw tradition um, overlaid and influenced the real life and politics of the 14th and 15th century at that time. So that should be a pretty fun one. And then on November 12th, we have our very own Rockland uh, Shakespeare Society who is going to be doing um, some readings of their favorite poems. And if you don't know anything about the Rockland Shakespeare Society. They um, have been together since 1889 and meeting here just about uh, that long. Uh, something I didn't know about them was they were started by a group of ladies who um, were looking for intellectual stimulation and they did not admit men until the 1980s. I thought that was interesting. Uh, let me check the, let's see. Oh, cool. Everybody's getting to know each other. That's super sweet. Um, all right. So tonight we have the Central Maine Ghost Hunters. And I think, tell me if I miss anybody, we've got Dustin and Jamie and Cassidy and John and Michael and Heather and Mike and George and Renee. Is that everyone? That's uh, all of us. That's all of us. Um, scattered throughout Central Maine, some from Lewiston, some from Skowhegan, some from towns that I didn't quite hear you say. Um, and I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. So I'm going to turn it over to Dustin and he can continue the int uh, introductions. If you have any questions, just pop them into a chat and we'll get to them uh, how we get to them. And we've got until eight o'clock, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey guys, thank you for joining us tonight. This, like she said, this is our first ever Zoom presentation. So just bear with us tonight. Um, we're doing some new things. Um, she already introduced the team. So, hey guys, say hello. Hi. Hello. And not, not all of us are on right now, but hopefully soon uh, we'll get a couple more of the team members on here. Right, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to go through uh, some slides to show you what we do. We have some pictures on there of some equipment that we use. 
and we're going to show you a video. It's our popular video um, that we've done. So you'll, you'll see that at the end. Maybe uh, uh, after the video, we can then open it up to Q and A. Uh, yep. Any any questions anybody might have about the paranormal or what we do, or if we didn't cover something that you have a question about, um, we'll we'll be answering those questions at the very end. Uh, eh? <laughs> Is that Lily again? Yeah. Hi, Lily. Luna, go side. All right, is uh, anybody else have anything to add before yeah. we start? So Dustin's the founder of the group. What what year did you what did you start Central Mango Centers? Well, we started uh, in 2012. There was just two of us, um, but over time we ended up growing. Now there's nine members. And we've done a lot of things from Maine to um, Vermont, Vermont, Rhode Island. So we're starting to go out of state now. So. I, uh, I think I'm th three years into the group. Um, I met Dustin, uh, Heather and me met Dustin at Parafest. He had been uh, hosting it for three or four years and we got to know him and uh, did a lot of work with him. And over time, <clears throat> we joined his group. So now I'm a uh, team leader for Central Mango Hunters, and I do the edits for the videos that we put out on YouTube. He does pretty good. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? I'm just going to get this ready to, for the slides. Can you guys all see this? I see it. Caitlin D sees it. All right, so this is uh, our team. This is what we do. This is our roles. We all pitch in. We all pretty much do a lot of research and uh, most of us all do the investigations. Like what we said, <clears throat> what we were saying before. Founded in 2012 by Dustin as a team of nine oh. members. John, Michael, as team leaders with Dustin. Um, we are a team of paranormal enthusiasts who share the same common goals to find, study, and research the ethereal beings that exist in the shadows of our world. Our mission statement is to investigate reports of the paranormal, uh, establish credible evidence, and help both people and spirits find peace. Some popular shows like uh, Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, anything like that. Uh, they All their shows are compiled evidence put into one video. Um, so what we do isn't like you see on TV. At times it, it is boring because there's nothing, but at times it's very exciting and very busy. Yeah, in like a, in a active ghost locations, there can be hours at a time where nothing actually goes on mm -hmm. it's and we we kind of study that and like try to establish like what's going on like um you know like moon phases or whatever uh, there's sometimes more activity you know during full moons or whatever or um at locations where there's things like trigger trigger objects that like a spirit might be attached to we might get more evidence when there's uh, things like that in the location. But it is a, a uh, the shows are a compilation of sometimes like two or three days of investigation. You see it usually in like a 30 minute clip on TV, but it is a long process of investigating and then going back through and seeing what you actually got. 
Mike, uh, he's the one, like you said earlier, he's the one that does all the videos and goes through all the edits. That's a lot of a lot of time considering uh, the amount of cameras we have. Because he has to go through the cameras we have plus um, the hours that we do uh, during the investigation. So that's a lot of hours together before he can put the video together. Right. So and he's, uh, he's got a lot to do. With the, with the equipment too, like um, we'll go over the equipment in a few slides from now, but it's video, but it's also audio because, you know, we'll record audio and uh, sometimes when you're speaking to a spirit, you don't hear it, you know, with your ears, but with one of our tools, it's got a sensitive microphone and you can pick up voices. So it's going through all of the hours of investigation with video and audio. <clears throat> so you want to touch on a type of hunting? Who's up? Heather Cassidy? <sighs> yeah, I can read it. It says residual hauntings are generally most common, repeated playbacks of auditory, visual, olfactory, and other sensory phenomena that are attributed to a traumatic event, life-altering event, or a routine event of a person or a place like an echo or a reply of a videotape of past events. Intelligent, uh, best described as responsive, usually human entity with whom you have interacted in intelligent communication. This type of entity is seemingly the personality of the person who once lived and who is either trapped in our world or in between ours and another realm or has already moved on to the next plane and can now freely travel back and forth between our realm and theirs and or other presumably elsewhere. And then demonic, which is your bad type of haunting, generally described as evil energy from an unknown source unrelated to the human form. Many believe demons are sent by the devil, but many non-believers have experienced demonic hauntings. We've had a, our share of those in the past. <laughs> yes, we have. Cassie, you, you read this, this or do you want me to? Uh, sure. Um, so a residual haunting is pretty much going to be any time. I won't read the slide. I'll just summarize. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. But a residual haunting is just when you see something that always walks from one doorway to the other doorway, or it's, um, you know, it may be a smell of cigarette smoke always in that one spot. It's something that it's almost a guarantee that if you hit it at the right time, at the right everything, you'll have that experience because that, that haunting is stuck in that time loop and it's just doing what it's done before and it's going to continue Hi. doing. Hi, Lily. <laughs> So it's just one of those hauntings where it's it's that energy is stuck, whether it be something they did a lot in their lifetime or the end of their lifetime. It doesn't necessarily mean that was what they were doing when they died. It may just be something that they ended up, their time loop is, they're in that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Identification of an intelligent haunting, often called an active haunt. These can be very frightening, though rarely the entity means any harm to the living. An intelligent haunting involves a spirit who is intentionally present and sometimes even attempts to communicate with the living. Sometimes the spirits are unaware they have passed uh, other times they do know and are driven to bring some message to the living. Intelligent hauntings can include uh, the lightning of an apparition, hearing a voice, or sometimes being aware of communication without any sound from the spirit. They can appear in the clothing that would have, hold on, the screen's covered. But anyway, uh, long, long, long story short, um, an intelligent haunting is one that you can interact with. And those are really fun. And those intelligent hauntings are 
best um, best uh, type of way to communicate with them is definitely with like things like spirit box um, and you'll get like relevant answers to your questions. Well, down here we have uh, a couple of our dolls here. It's Hopsum and Rosemary. Um, we got these guys um, from somebody, I want to say out of Portland. Uh, they called us one time, one day, I think it was last year, and said they had some dolls that they were scared of, they wanted to get rid of. Um, stuff was falling off the shelves and they'd hear little whispers. So of course we decided, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and we have them. They're actually right at John and Cassidy's right now. Um, and we took him to, to the Parafest event that we was hosting last year. And uh, we had John Zappas there. You guys have heard of John Zappas from uh, um, Haunted, tell me out guys. <laughs> the yes, Haunted Collector. You, Haunted Collector. Um, he came up to me. He's like, "Yep, you definitely have haunted dolls." Right. right. So that's cool that he verified that for us. So uh, Heather and me and John and Cassidy kept them in our house. They're currently with John and Cassidy now, but Dustin never brought them into his house because he was too scared. I think. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't my choice. I I, I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they weren't. They weren't really active in our house. We had uh, a, a light up ball uh, placed next to them and a few times it went off by itself, but they are definitely interesting. I would agree here. They're pretty quiet, but they, um, we've been having more and more experiences. So maybe, maybe they're ramping up. I don't know. We've been well, having great things. They're ready the, for Halloween. The veil yeah. is thin. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you guys know what a demonic haunting is. What? what? <laughs> uh, they tend to start in much the same way of intelligent haunting and progress from uh, there to a much more sinister presence. It can progress from audible thumps and groans to personal attacks on individuals such as pushing, scratching, and jarring blood and leaving welts. Uh, they're known to have the ability to pos uh, possess objects such as dolls and uh, haunted item, items as well. Yep. The lady that had come before us complained of a lot of things that would make it seem like they were demonic, but we, none of us that have had them have had any really demonic experiences with them. They've really just been, things that have happened have been things falling off my shelf or we've seen a couple shadows every now and then, which I don't, you know, I don't know what those were so we haven't had anything bad to say that they're demonic the lady who had them thought maybe there was something but who knows they react differently for different people maybe right maybe like the energy in your house or something could make them act different right So this list has actually grown. <laughs> yeah. As we've uh, as we've grown, we've kind of acquired more equipment, and there's still plenty more to to get also that we would like to have in our toolbox. But this is generally um, a good amount of stuff to have when trying to establish credible communication with spirits. So the first one is digital cameras, and I'm trying to look through here. Um, the the type of cameras we use um, have night vision, and you're you're skipping my slide, Dustin. But yeah, anyway, Sorry. so one of them is uh, is digital cameras. We use them to to see things that you that when the lights are out, and we've got the IR light going on the camera. Sometimes we can see mists or questionable light anomalies, and we pick those up with the digital cameras. 
And it looks like the next slide starts with spirit box, right, Dustin? Yeah. You want to take that one? Yeah. The, what? It's a map. All right. So the spirit box, uh, this is your SB7. This is the SB11. Um, it's an audio device used for contacting spirits through the use of radio frequencies. Um, which we use, actually we use that quite a bit. Um, theory suggests the white noise gives spirits the energy they need to be heard. Um, and when this occurs, you may hear the voices and sounds coming through the static and an attempt to communicate. Yeah. Which you see, see that on some of our videos. And some, we weren't able to make any contact, but some videos, it does show uh, what the conversations that we have had. And it actually, once you, once you have that, it's, it gets you going, so it's it's a, it's a great experience um, to try to talk with them. The SB eleven, we tried. We used that. We used that a few times. We used it in Augusta, and it it wasn't exactly. I don't know. We 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 didn't get as much uh, evidence using the SB eleven as the like original gangster SB7. That one seems to be the go-to for a lot of uh, paranormal investigators. Yeah, we normally use the SB7 now. We don't really use the SB11 anymore. And that, that little speaker on the SB7 on the top, it's terrible. Like, and then even if you, if you unplug it and try to use the speaker on the device itself, it's even worse. So like we've moved on to um, just hooking a regular Sony speaker to it so that you can actually really make out what's being said. And that thing does wonders. Yep. <laughs> Heather, you got the EMF detector. Yeah, I can do that. Um, so the EMF detector uh, detects electric, elect, bleh, electromagnetic frequencies, and basically, it uh, when the spirit comes close to it, it'll it'll light up, and they can use that for like communication. You can, you know, ask them questions, and then it would uh, light up the the lights. You see, there's like five lights there. Um, you can be like light it up to red, or just try to, you know list or uh, initiate act, like communication with them and stuff yeah it's a it's a good tool to like um uh, feel like, like obviously your bodies are the best tool but this is almost kind of like an extension of your your body where if you like feel something like the cold chills or or whatnot and if you have an emf detector with you that like you're like oh i you know i felt a cold breeze and then you've got your detector and it starts lighting up it's like validation that what you're feeling can actually be you know shown on the device and then we would move forward with other equipment to try and continue uh, communication the only thing with these is you have to be careful because a lot of things do set them off so you have to um, pay attention to debunking them and making sure that you're not standing next to an old power line and going, oh my God, it's all the way to red. Yep. And it's actually just a power line. Um, it Same with your phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you're, when you're Facebook living, it usually goes up to red all the time. And Dustin <laughs> likes to do that. You gotta, you gotta stand a good distance away from it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs> <clears throat> so the other oh. thing we have is some ir and night vision cameras and these are just cameras um that catch infrared electromagnetic waves um so they may be waves that are lower on um, visible light waves so you can see in dark basically better and it uses a red light it's <laughs> fantastic that's really all there is to say about that i think I think this is actually one of the cameras that we do have, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, it is. And, you know, with that particular camera, 
uh, you'll notice on the bottom it has an attached IR light to it that's separate from the camera itself. So it kind of runs on its own battery. So one thing that we have issues with with our cameras that hopefully by the next season we'll be able to upgrade is your IR light if it's if it's in with your camera and you know running from the same camera as the battery you're you're not you're getting maybe 30 minutes of film because uh, it uses a lot of power to to run the IR light so <clears throat> the one in this picture is a good example of what you should probably do to avoid um, losing some battery life on your camera is just having a detachable IR light <clears throat> on the bottom or top. That way you can uh, film for hours. But like I said, the one we have, um, the IR light runs from the camera battery and it just drains it. It's terrible. Keep changing them out. Yeah. So the laser grid, it helps you pick up shadows. Like you can see like a shadow walk right in front of it. Um, it's a scatter highly concentrated dots in a grid across the walls, floor and ceiling. So if anything moves in front of the laser, you will notice a shift in the grid pattern. A uh, laser grid gives us the ability to see shadows movements that we may not notice with the naked eye. Mm -hmm. So we do use that. Um, we have a couple of these we set up during our location, during, during our investigations. And those are fairly <laughs> easy to acquire, right? You don't have to go to a special uh, like haunted website, right? You, no, those yeah. are just Christmas lights you can get, right? Right on Amazon. Um, actually, um, Christmas time, I bought, I bought one that you can use and it works well. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of them big ones. You can, it's an indoor outdoor one. Um, and it, it it's a green dots. It's got green or red, but you always use a green one. Um, and it lights the whole room, depending on the size of the room. But yeah, it works well and it, it's big. It's a big one, but there's also laser pens, how much work great as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I think you guys got a laser pen, didn't you? Yeah. 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 So we have a couple different things. Uh, <clears throat> the thermal imager, this one's really uh, cool. These are can get quite expensive. Um, it's like, uh, I mean, it looks like predator vision, but what it is is it just uses um, heat signatures to identify uh, what you're looking at. And the picture is an example of if you had the gun pointed at a human, uh, you see, you'll notice the reds, oranges, um, a lot of times if we're using this and we encounter a spirit, you'll see more like blue, like no heat, like colder temperatures, um, but it will still register. It'll just be like a, a blue color. Heather. Ah, yes, the dowsing rods. <clears throat> um, so dowsing rods are made up of like 99.9% .9 copper. Um, and basically like what copper does, it's, it's like a natural energy conductor. So it conducts, uh, the, like the spirits can like touch them. And <clears throat> Sorry. What you would do is you would uh, hold them out straight in front of you and the spirits, uh, you like make sure like they're straight. Um, and like you can ask them questions like yes or no questions and if they cross it's a yes and they can pull it apart for a no and it's it's pretty cool because it's like a like an older kind of way of go hunting instead of the electronic stuff yeah um we've we've had a lot of luck with those um communicating and one thing about them is uh they're they're significant to the person who's using them, right? Heather, like you kind of yeah. become acquainted with your tools and they'll work for you. But if, if like, if Heather gave them to me and I tried to use them, you, I don't know, you, it's weird. You kind of have a relationship with, with these specific tools and they work 
better for the owner of them. And uh, in old times, and it's still practiced today, dowsing rods are used to find bodies of water, right? Yeah, yeah, you can find uh, bodies of water, uh, like moving water will usually set them off. So like if you're by a river, um, like they actually used to use them to find sources of water back, uh, back then, uh, like to locate them and stuff. Uh, I just want to mention Jude just left a comment in the chat. She wanted to know where we get the equipment. Amazon. Um, we've got a lot of stuff from Amazon. Amazon is actually the cheapest route. Um, they also have one. Uh, it's a ghost. Uh, what's that one? Augustine? You know what that is? What's ghost that? Augustine, ghost Augustine, I believe, the website, something like that. Yeah, yeah there's a couple different ones you can go to. But Amazon usually has the better deals. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, we just got another question. Have we used a necrophonic as a spirit box? And we did, right, Heather? Uh, at Parsons Field. Yep. Yeah, it was, um, that was, I, I really enjoyed using that. I want to use it more. It was our first experience uh, using it. Uh, very cool. Um, uh, what did it say? It said, what was oh. it? Like um, one of the mem one said. of the team members got cut or whatever, right? And they were like, they're laughing at you or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. It said that they were like laughing at him. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was the same one that said something about sitting on him too, sitting on someone. Oh right, right. So the necrophonic is cool. We we've used that. That was at Parsons Field Seminary. You get the voice recorder, which I'm sure everybody knows what a voice recorder is. <laughs> but you can sit down, you can pick up the voices. Um, and then you can just go back through it and listen and see if you picked anything up. So you record it for a little while to try to have a conversation and you don't hear nothing with your ears. You pick that up, listen to it. Sometimes you'll hear like whispers. So these are actually important to use. We have a handful of these actually um, throughout yeah. the team. So. Um, I think it was the library, one of the libraries we did. I literally got my best, uh, audio recording with one of these ever and I remember getting it and played it for the whole group that was there and everybody was like so shocked because the voice that came through was so clear we had asked um why aren't you talking or something like that and like so clearly this little girl just goes I'm shy and it was it was just it, it blew my mind to to be able to hear that but these these pick up those those whispers mm-hmm We have a couple more questions. Um, where was the last place that we explored? Um, I think Mike and Heather were the last ones to go somewhere. They went to Parsons Field Seminary. Um, I think the last time we were all together was in the middle of summer. We did the Pines. Is that the last time we were all together? I want to say, mm -hmm. yeah, due to yeah. COVID, it slowed us down quite a bit. Yeah. You know, we had to think kind of outside the box because we weren't really able to get into anywhere at the at the beginning of this and we did the pines in madison and that was that was that was terrifying like being outside <laughs> in the woods i don't know it's a little different than we being go back we need to go back yeah it was fun yeah it was fun and then well, we do have two more investigations next month so oh yeah that's right and then someone asked what's a necrophonic necrophonic so Mike or Heather, you guys might want to describe that. Yeah. Heather, how did that work? It was, I think it was an app on. Yeah, it was an app on the phone, I think. Someone. That's what, I, that's what I've been reading. Yeah. Yeah, it was an app on the phone and it's. 
can't remember the name of the other thing that it's like, but there's another, sorry, there's another box that's like it, that does kind of the same. It's oh, like it's kind of like the, the thing that John Zaffis showed us, right? Yeah, yeah. And John I Zaffis? Yeah, I can't remember the name of it, though. Oh, the Echo Box. Echo Box. Yeah, there you go. It works a lot like that. But it's cool because it is, it's an app on your phone and, and uh, you can download. I, it might cost money. I don't, I don't remember, but if you if you want to look it up or whatever you can find it on the play store um so we have another question have any of you been so scared you had to leave i don't think mm. none of us have had to duck I don't out think so things have happened to us more days after or right after a investigation things will start happening if it's yeah. something when we're dealing with the more demonic stuff I mean, I might have peed myself, but I changed when I came right back. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it definitely, it gets, it gets scary. Um, but like Cassidy said, a lot of the scarier stuff happens after the lockdown hangover. You know, when you, when you don't sleep all night and then you go back home and sometimes they just hit your ride and then they, they do some crazy stuff uh, to your dreams and, you know, physically to you, we've been, we've been scratched and scarred, like after, after some dark investigations, and that's pretty scary. I think one spirit uh, at Madison followed me back and like, made my nose bleed, and it was just, it was complete chaos. I, your I'm, whole personality. Mm. yeah i swore and i told the team mm. like there is no way i can ever go back to that place because they invited us back several times and i think dustin and a couple others went back but me and heather were like no <laughs> we're yeah. good yeah that was that was a, a long hangover after that one mm -hmm. things got intense for sure um i see another question of did you what was the scariest thing that ever happened to you during a trip um, I think we kind of just went over that. And did you find any remains, I think you're trying to say, Riley? Um, we've never had any remains that we've ever found. No. But it but at the at um the pines, it was interesting because there's a lot of like sunken graves in the woods that were like kind of forgotten, I guess. I don't know. It was really uh, strange. That's where the, the Indian massacre was and they so the the story that I was told by someone who's lived in the town for a really long time was that after the massacre happened, they literally just put them all into the ground. They just got rid of them. They never really took care of them or anything. So they just kind of made mounds and put them there. So I don't know if the mounds that we found were the same things or if it was just people out there digging it up. I don't, I have no idea. It was weird. Definitely worth going back though. Yeah. Yeah, I felt like we were being led uh, deeper into the woods, and it was so scary. That yeah, I I would have run out of that place. One of the questions earlier, like, is there a place you've ever run out of? I think if I had to stay there any longer, I would have. I none of us went yeah. back through the woods, so I guess that counts because we had to walk out of a cemetery instead. So. Right. <laughs> right. Fun times. Yeah. yeah. Which we have not investigated a cemetery in quite some time. So, you know what's what's kind of cool though. Uh, this last weekend, we did a Heather and me did a cemetery just just to hang out. Like we were like, oh, we're we're in Connecticut. Let's go to the cemetery, and we were actually able to get some um, no not communication. Well, kind of communication. We had uh, EMF detector, and we were able to get um, one of the spirits there to communicate with us through that it was cool um so we have some more questions coming through do you try to protect yourself with light before and after your investigations i know for myself um we absolutely sage, yeah we sage in palo santo all the time at my house just in general um and then we also have all of our own rituals that we we all do different rituals i think like what we have on us or what we use to protect ourselves, but we all do something definitely to protect ourselves. Yep. Um, 
clearing your mind before and after a lockdown has been like really effective for me and something I had to learn how to do over time from bad experiences. I had to, you know, learn to acclimate myself to whatever's going on and like, you know, and I, I had a St. Michael's medallion that I would wear uh, to investigations also. And other people will do grounding like uh, Heather, can you explain what grounding is? Yeah, so grounding is <clears throat> basically like when you uh, kind of it's it's a chance to let the energy flow through your body. Um, so basically like what you would do, like it, it sounds like really funny, but you like can hug a tree, be a little tree hugger and the energy will flow down in through that. And then um, you can also like walk on the ground barefoot. Um, yeah, basically just things to kind of send to yourself and, uh, you know, let the energy kind of just flow through you. Uh, Dustin, are we done with the, the slideshow? Can we take the, that off or do we got a couple more? I believe we have, this is the last, oh, okay. last one. Nice. So take, take your photos, lots of photos. Just make sure your phone is on airplane mode. And that will help prevent false readings with the detector. So, yeah, and uh, when we'll get back to the questions too after this, but um, taking a sequence of photos so you can compare them. You know what I mean? In ones in one shot, like one, two, three, four, and you go through the shots, and if there's something in there, you know that's how we're we're able to to try and figure out what we're actually looking at. Right. We usually take what at least three photos a piece, anyways, when we're snapping pictures, just so you can compare. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that is the last slide. Okay. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Cassidy, you remember where we were on the questions? Uh, okay, so I got one of the questions. Do you watch any YouTubers who do similar things? If so, who? Um, actually, there's a YouTuber that we started watching a few years ago who started doing abandoned places and it was exploring with Josh. He's since then created a new channel with his friend Seth called beyond the dark so we've been uh we've been following that we've been following them on youtube for quite some time and obviously like i'm a big fan of ghost adventures um there's also what's the main group that um went to parafest we watched them with Hot me yeah, yeah. Me. <laughs> that's what i was thinking of I yep. can their name. We watch them a lot as well. Um, and they're local Maine going to places right here in Maine generally. Definitely um, a great um, group of people. Yeah. I think they just started their new season too, right? Or something? I want to say they did, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they use they're, some different techniques. Yeah, they're definitely fun to watch. Um, our next trip. Our next trip is going to be in the Auburn Community Little uh, Theater. I'm so excited about that because that's like in my backyard for like ever. It seems like we just had to travel everywhere. And I don't mind traveling, but it's kind of cool that I'm actually finally able to go with the team on some place that's local. Not to drive yeah. as much. No, it's our turn to drive. Right. Yeah. But from there, though, we have that one on the, on the 6th. Then on the 9th, we're going down to, it's on a Monday night, um, to the Benjamin's Pub in Bangor. Yeah, we have oh. some exciting stuff coming up for sure. Plus, we have something else that we're not sharing at the moment, but just just stay tuned and keep watching. I'm just going to tease it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, have you ever heard or watched? Oh my gosh, I've heard of I've I've heard of that. I don't know if I've ever watched that. It, yeah, he's a YouTuber, know. right? I, I'm not sure. I it don't sound too familiar to me. I think I think I've heard of it. I'm gonna have to check it out though. <laughs> All right, so maybe we can start a video or and do questions after. What do you guys think? I think we can do the video. Yeah, let's do the video. All right, so, so with this video, we went down, what was it, late March, early April? Right at the beginning of COVID, right when they were starting to lock everybody down. So with this video, um, we went down to Rhode Island to the house that inspired the Conjuring movie known as a conjuring house. Um, we went down there and made this video. And this is actually our most popular video. It's been 2 point, what? 2.8 thousand views. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you haven't watched it, then this is actually pretty cool, except for the ending. I almost died at the end. So <laughs> yeah, that wasn't yeah. so much fun. <laughs> we were it was hoping funny to have though. Like, yeah, we were hoping to have like a- a new video you know by the time we were doing this zoom meeting but uh things didn't work out but hopefully soon we'll have some new ones i did want to ask jessica um uh when we play our video are we able to talk over it um like commentary i don't you know i'm not actually sure about that yeah i think you want to be able to if it's if it's on a screen that you're sharing then i i think it will let because you, yeah, yeah, you can go ahead okay. and try it. If not, you could just pause it if you there's something you wanted to say. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna screen share unless you guys have anything else you want to add. Dustin, Cassidy, John. Oh, we're good. Nope. Is John okay. up here yet? No, he's not home yet. So. Okay. Okay. We're gonna start it. We're gonna to try to do some commentary about what was actually going on, um, and we should still have some time at the end for questions if you have any questions. But I'm gonna go ahead and play this. Just let me know if you if you want to hear it. The first death from coronavirus here in the United States. Tonight, can, the governor can of you guys hear declaring it? a state of yeah, emergency. We can hear you end it. President Trump has declared a national emergency. So yeah, guys, at any point in this video, if if there's something you want to mention, just just tag it or write it or say it. It's just a matter of time before the virus arrives in Maine. Well, here's what we know. 46 people were tested on the cruise ship for the coronavirus. And while we deal with the growing emergency here at home, for many, the crisis is already in full swing. The most active hotspot right now is Italy. It's not worth the risk. Um, so really staying at home, even though it's difficult in the moment. Yeah, like when we drove down there, it was, they were just about starting the orders like stay safe stay safer at home but they hadn't completely done it yet so we were like hey this might be the last chance we get so we're gonna do it the uh the owners Corey and jen they're they're really great people And they're local people. They're actually from Rumford, Maine, if anybody knows where that is. Mm -hmm. And we uh, did, what's that, Heather? We did another investigation, too, there in Rumford, um, over community center. Yeah, the community center with them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, someone just asked, why did they ask for us to come? They uh, they have their house opened up to investigators now. And so, you know, anybody who wants to come and experience it, make a video, do an investigation, they, they welcome it. And you have to pay a fee to get in, but they're, they're, they're wonderful people, great hospitality. 
six. Stepping onto the property was like peering into the past. Built in 1736, this house bore witness to the birth of America. So we're out here just checking out the surrounding property. It's just amazing. It feels like no time passes here. It's just a weird feeling. So much history. After absorbing the land's peaceful presence, it was time to enter the home. They're actually uh, Corey and Jen with Nick Groff, who used to be on uh, Ghost Adventures. They're doing a live seance here this Friday. Um, get inside. Get I actually think work. they're doing it right now. Starting oh, are they right now? Today. Yeah, it started today. Well, no, no, it's tomorrow. Don't don't have anybody change off from our video. <laughs> no, but it's going to be cool. It's going to be really cool. The house is amazing. It's so old. And like down in the basement, there was like snake malting uh, skins on the walls. Ugh. Isn't there like kid drawings in the um, refrigerator or in some like metal thing? Yeah, the crooked neck lady. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We're using a <laughs> detector to try and locate the spirit. It's uh, John upstairs. You hear me just now say that's John upstairs. It's good to tag your videos so that when you go back through, if you hear something, but like I tagged it, I'll be able to know, like, oh, that was that was actually a noise from Our somewhere else. Here yielded no results. We then moved to the other end of the basement. Be able to turn that up a little bit, Mike. We just get a message. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. We actually started getting some pretty good communication. Uh, there was one that really stuck out to me. I think Heather said something along. Let me know the if that works. Of... Focus, please, one at a time. Back up, please. We switched over to the spirit box and we started getting a couple relevant voices and answers, but we decided to end the basement session and go upstairs. When we got upstairs, that's when it started getting weird. So you notice the... Uh... We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. What's happening? Hey, Brooke, we really don't know a whole lot. We're investigating reports of shots being fired near the Capitol. People are going insane. With communication and activity having ceased in the basement, we moved upstairs where John Huntington has set up his spirit box. That uh, that spirit box is actually like a karaoke box uh, slash spirit box that John built. I feel weird. I heard I feel and then weird. Are you able to manifest? Hey Dustin oh, I saw an orb go. or uh, Cassidy, can you just let me know if anyone asks a question? Because I'm not able to see it. I keep seeing like orbs go around yep. this thing. After hearing my full name, I turned the camera around to face me. 
If you look at the raw audio file of this moment, you'll notice the audio was completely cut. Uh, no, we had somebody asked if we had investigated Fort Knox. Um, we have have twice. Me and John have twice. Um, well, we can talk about that after the video. Yeah. Setting. What are you setting? Doesn't 207 Paranormal do a bunch there? Yes, they do. Yep. But as a team, we haven't. Right. Sitting? Yeah. Did you mean sitting? Say what's up? Do you want us to go in that room? Yes. Which room were they talking about? That one. Wasn't Ann Oh, I just saw a fucking big ass orb. Uh, seven minutes, 35 seconds. Sorry about the language, guys. Forgot to warn you. Did you just come in here? Hi. Eight. That was clear. kid, right? Someone in there. Did you hear that? Dude, there's something in the other room, like moving. Sure was my shadow. No, no, no. We heard like a walking. Oh, we heard that over here too. Okay. They heard. Dude, that's awesome. I'm going in. When they said they heard, I, I was like, there's no way I'm not going in there. That is too relevant to avoid. Or ignore. Um, Mike, we have a question. What does that mean, demonic? You would put on the bottom of the screen, demonic scuff. Yes, I'll bring it back. Oh, I think uh, what I meant by that was like, um, like it Just sounded it like it was something angry that was uh, like, like, like a. Uh, what's, I'm gonna look up the definition for scuff because I don't know exactly what uh, I'm trying to say, but. Like a growl? Yeah, when you like when you scoff at something. Okay, so on here it says speak to someone or about something in a scornfully uh, mocking way. So yeah, it was like it was uh, mocking us or didn't feel like it wanted us there. two at the same time so we definitely would have caught something on one of them yeah he totally got it if after you like touch your hair there's a quick like oh, yeah. you to show john dude it's badass yeah dude that's what i felt that's so freaky kind of hard to see it's quick Now we're really beginning to see the intelligent communication in the hallway that I'm standing in. That starts to feel like a gateway. Yes. 
That's fucking awesome, yeah, dude. Awesome. That was a good capture. Pay attention to the wall behind Dustin as a light anomaly seems to appear out of thin air. Uh, I felt a cold breeze come through here, by the way. You can tell I was really nervous right there. And uh, I think it <laughs> it's it noted that I was nervous. Taking a quick break to replace our batteries, we returned to the upstairs and placed a boo bear in the bed that spirits can manipulate by passing through it using their energy. We've also laid a light up ball below the bear. Yeah! There we go. Do it again! Although there was no second interaction with the ball, the night was not yet over. Behind this tiny door is a location of the upstairs called the birthing room. No, Dustin, that was a birthing room because literally that's where they would have childbirth, right? Because it was yeah. a warm, a warm location next to the, um, next to the chimney, right? Yeah. Next to the fireplace, and it was right from people being able to hear them scream. Right. <laughs> Would this be the love child of Hobsom and Rosemary? I wonder if they still have that doll. I'd like to see if they'll like give it to us. I bet they would. Just in that little room. Yeah. American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. We're going to go through a very tough two weeks. It's been a lot longer than two weeks. Facing fear is something that we've been doing since we started our journey. And if there's one takeaway that has helped us overcome, it's that when you're confronted with darkness, you need to give it some light. I literally felt like I couldn't walk through that doorway, like something was stopping me. Is that the middle bedroom? Yes. It's like a threshold. That middle bedroom is the darkest room I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. It's, it's like, insanely dark. It's like partial brain disconnect seizures. And that's kind of like what it feels like when I walk through there. You get chills. John's like, I'll walk through it. <laughs> Looked like I was flexing. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately after feeling the effects of this threshold, a glowing anomaly appears in the door frame. <laughs> Time is it? Yeah, time time passes weird here. Yeah, I gotta switch batteries and then we'll go to the barn. I want to do more in the barn. We spent like an hour in there. We didn't get a lot, but the first one was like to uh, investigate. Supposedly there was a guy who died in there of, what was it? I don't remember. Someone died right near there due to exposure, exposure. I thought. Yep, yeah, that's what it was. They were, out, they were out partying, I believe, right? And they passed away, I think so, yeah. passed away like in a snowbank. Yep. 
right near there. The didn't capture any EV. And like on the property, there was like that. What was it? The Indian massacre thing? Is that what it was? No. I think there was a, like a war or a, a battle fought. Yeah, yeah. And then they found bodies buried, right yeah, by the by the fence thing. Yeah, I think um, either Nick Croft or Exploring with Josh is doing a video where they're digging it up with Jen and Corey, I think, soon. I don't remember. Yeah, I think it uh, starts tomorrow, I think. They're live so tomorrow. Cool. Today. I don't know. This is the super dangerous bridge. Never walk a crooked bridge at night. <laughs> <laughs> And you, I should have probably walked closer to the middle too, but for some dumb reason, I decided to walk on the edge of it. I think I probably followed your dumb ass. Sorry, <laughs> sorry your, your, your footsteps. So sketch. Just not used to that, sorry. <laughs> we'll put a disclaimer on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Mike's fault. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't edit my swears, but I edited your swears. Like I almost died right there. Yeah, he almost went down. You, <laughs> maybe, maybe we go back and go down to that Yeah, sure. <laughs> nice. With the readings on the land nominal, it was time to face our biggest challenge, sleeping in the conjuring house. Just got back from <laughs> that was scary i don't i kept my phone on me and i like heathered fell asleep pretty quickly and i think i watched the office because i was like oh, this is creepy need something funny yep. I wanted to use this last little bit of the video to sort of put out a message uh, to anybody who needs to hear it. Um, I've always believed that fear can be quite crippling. However, if you approach fear in the way that we have been, you can overcome mountains. So that, that's the end of our Conjuring House video. We had a couple of questions come in while we were playing the video. Um, mm -hmm. Have we heard of the Ghost of Carmel, Maine? Mm hmm We yeah. have. Yep. Uh, they're, on, they're on YouTube, right? I believe so. Yeah, that's some YouTube stuff. Yep. Yeah. And then also, um, what do you do when you feel the demonic? Ignore it and try not to give it energy. That's a, yeah, I mean, and if that isn't working, you you have to, you have to seek like professional help. But like, ultimately, like if it's something going on, uh, acknowledgement of it gives it energy. So it's best if you don't want it there to ignore it. And if it's not leaving, you you need to bless the house or sage the house or something. We've had, we've all had to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we all sage after every investigation ourselves and our places just so we don't bring anything back. Mm -hmm. Good to be safe. Sure. Yeah, that was a lesson learned because I didn't I didn't learn that in Madison. I brought it back and it was rough. Was we brought bad. demon levels back. The sinister four winds captured the demons that were in the house in bottles. And John's got actually mine, ours <laughs> from our house. He's got we have a like eight or nine of them at our house right now. <laughs> but starting yeah, a collection. Yeah. They, <laughs> they affected us pretty strongly. I got a question for you guys. Have you have you ever encountered, I don't know, a spirit or whatever that maybe wasn't human, like an animal? Actually, uh, what is it? We've 
at two different videos we've gotten dogs <laughs> barking on like the yeah. spirit box ghost dogs <laughs> yeah ghost dogs um and joanna actually um one of the people we visited she actually was able to see their dog and describe wow. it perfectly for them this is um, at somebody's home in richmond and it was right to a t yeah. yeah it was wow. an odd it was an odd dog it wasn't like a, it, was it like wasn't, a hybrid dog so it yeah. wasn't like a, a dog she could just pick out of thin air it was unfortunately she's stuck at work right now uh, she okay. just messaged sure. but yeah she um she can see some cool stuff i mean there wasn't any pictures of the dog so i mean we did look just because we were curious and that's that was very interesting and, and i'm sure with some of the stuff we see we might not acknowledge it as a dog but I'm sure we've encountered stuff that's glances of things across the floor or shadow or something like that. It could be, we have no idea what it is, but it could be a, a pet. Um, I think they, they, I think they exist after. Right. Um, some of the other questions we had were what happened in that place to make it haunted? I assume they're talking about the conjuring house. 300 years of families and energy. <laughs> um, death and suicide. Death, suicide, yeah. It's had a lot of unexplained deaths on the property, not necessarily in the house, just on the property. And uh, and rituals too. I mean, it's the conjuring house, so a lot of conjuring rituals happen there. Wasn't that the one with, or maybe it was a myth, I can't remember, the Bathsheba, the witch? That was a- No, she lived down, yeah. right? That was yeah, actually okay, not, yeah, it wasn't a true thing. They said yeah. that um, that was actually put on Ghost Adventures, but it was in the, come to find out it was actually. Oh uh, well, just kidding. Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> in the movies, The Conjuring, they they portray Bathsheba as, as being right the evil person, but Bathsheba actually had nothing to do. They can't find any evidence that Bathsheba had anything to do with actually the family. Oh okay. She wasn't there. She is buried down the road though. And they keep parting her monuments, so. Yeah, we don't want to give her no bad publicity so she can keep, just in case keep her stones <laughs> just in case she's evil i don't want her coming after me so <laughs> excellent we probably have about five or six more minutes for questions um if people have any and also dustin or uh, mike would you mind putting your um email address and also the link to that youtube video in the chat in case people want to rewatch that video um, or any email address that you guys wouldn't mind being contacted at if people have more questions. Absolutely. Thanks. We do the team email. So okay. Riley, um, yes, we've, ex um, me and John have explored Fort Knox. Um, we had a couple experiences there. Um, one was I had a presence that they called Michael. He was around me. He was making the EMF go off quite a bit. Um, we had spirit box conversations. It was done with, it was a tour that we had taken before we joined this team actually. Um, and we, we didn't have no video of it or anything like that, but it was a really cool experience. We were just there this weekend actually as a family and we had some like really spooky pictures down some hallways and stuff, but we don't know what they really were. They were just spooky pictures. And to answer the second part of the question, has any of your partners scared you? Uh, we always try to scare <laughs> Dustin <laughs> or yeah. lock him alone in something. Uh, uh, we will have video evidence of him crying eventually someday, I think, or maybe peeing himself. That's the ultimate goal. I bet probably peeing myself. Just, just saying, <laughs> throwing it up there. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's an added benefit of of doing what we do is is trying to scare each other, but. Dustin's usually the victim of. of <laughs> I don't know why, but maybe I'm just fun of scaring. <laughs> the guy that's scared of spiders. I don't know. <laughs> so we put the email address in the, our YouTube and Facebook right in the messages here. Oh, great. Great. People can copy that if they want to. Um, who, which one of you is the drone pilot? Ew. John Mike. and Mike. Are you, have you ever been able to see anything with that? I haven't, I haven't captured anything. Uh, but uh, John, uh, John's drone piloting abilities are pretty good. I've seen him go through like tunnels and like up chimneys. So I think he would be the one to uh, 
capture something eventually. On his I don't know phone. if they're that good or if he just That's... he just doesn't care if he breaks it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm always screaming. I'm like, don't do it. <laughs> I might capture something if I don't lose the drone first. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jude posted a question to us. You do see animals. I had a dog that my mother said she gave to someone who had a farm. I came home from work and when I came around the corner, my dog was sitting on our porch as he always was wagging his tail, happy to see me like he did every day. Just sharing. Thanks, Jude. Thanks for sharing your story. Awesome. Yes, I think we all have um, our experiences since our dog passed away. Yeah. Um, at home, we hear noises out on the couch and stuff when we're in bed and we're like what is that and could i be, think some of it could be could our, be vegas yeah. yeah i'd be fine if she if she came back <laughs> yeah she'd be fine. all right i'm gonna say that's probably gonna be the end of the questions except that i have just one more for you before we close out um if somebody wanted to get into what you're doing what would be say like maybe the first three pieces of equipment they might get and um a really maybe um, like a good place to start, a location to start in? I mean, really, you can use your phone, take pictures. Uh, you can use that for anything, do that for that. And you can use it as a voice recorder. You can uh, get like a regular digital camera, mm -hmm. uh, a video camera, just your basic stuff. Okay. And even if you don't have a, a building to go into, you can always do a cemetery. Okay. What is it? Uh, pendulums too, like simple equipment that doesn't cost money for spirit communication. There's pendulums. And the cat toys too, the little light up balls. Mm -hmm. Those are, those are pretty cheap. And like, if they're there, they can push them. Sometimes you can get activity with those. I think a voice recorder and a camera is probably the two prime things that you'll catch a lot of stuff with. Yeah. And I like this person's question. I'm going to let you guys end with this one is, which one of you is the most scared to go into a place? <laughs> I, I think, mm. I don't know. I, I don't ever get scared. I get nervous. Yeah. Yeah, nervous and scared. I think but, we all get nervous. Um, I think, hold on, we're trying to get this back. Um, but... I don't think we have actually explored yeah. our own location. Um, actually, we did. We did Mike's, Mike and Heather's, I think, at one time. Yeah. I'm terrified to do what I want to do coming up on one of our next uh, videos, the next video. Um, we've been watching a lot of Destination Fear. And what they do is after their investigation, they set up a cot or a sleeping arrangement near wherever there was a lot of paranormal activity. So I'm going to challenge myself and try to do that at the end of our next investigation. I'm going to sleep next to where a door has been slammed shut by itself and it's a huge metal door. So I'm prepared to do that. Woohoo! I'm excited. Yeah, that's going to be For fun. you, fun. good luck. Good luck <laughs> Again, that. Just keep, keep watching because we, ha we will have a couple more videos coming out because we do have two next months and possibly uh more very soon after that so oh okay great and so you can just search uh central maine ghost hunters official on youtube mm -hmm. yep excellent excellent well i'm going to end the recording in just a few seconds and say uh good night but thank you um all of you for participating this is super cool you've also made me completely terrified about the fact that i'm now completely alone in the library <laughs> <laughs> So maybe someday when we, everybody can get together again, we'll have you come down and investigate us. Absolutely. That'll be fun. Thanks so much for participating. It was, it was wonderful. And I hope you all have a really great night. Happy Halloween, everybody. It's coming yeah, up. Have, have a great Halloween. And thank you guys again for, like she said, joining us tonight. Thanks. Happy Halloween. Good night.